You've pressed the red button. Now, here's something of no value. Stuart, the show was about television. You seem to have a very, very low opinion of television. So, you know, why are we here? Um, well, I, th I think that the series is um, aimed, if it's aimed at anyone, it's aimed at people that think they don't really like television or comedy. Mm -hmm. The problem then, mm -hmm. where we've shot ourselves in the foot, um, is how do you get those people that think they don't like comedy or television to watch a comedy programme on television? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. if there's a flaw, if there's a gaping and obvious flaw in the whole conceit of this project, mm -hmm. it's that. Mm -hmm. It's that it's, it's aimed at people that are not interested in the medium on which it is being transmitted. There are lots of accusations about fakery in television. Uh, how do you respond to accusations that, that you were miming your stand-up routine now? Well, um, miming is a very strong word to use. At worst, what was happening is that I was going out and moving my mouth mm -hmm. to a pre-recorded uh, track of me saying the words. The accusation is that that wasn't uh, a recording of your voice. It was a recording of John Culshaw doing um, your voice. It, well, it was felt. It was felt by people higher up in the chain of command in the BBC that John Culshaw is a voice that people feel at ease with on some mm -hmm. level, and they're familiar with him from Dead Ringers. Mm -hmm. The problem is, where does that end? And, the, and as you know, this my voice has been stripped off this um, interview now. Yes. Uh -huh. and replaced with a recording of John Coleshaw doing an impression of my voice. I've often said that mm -hmm. success in television is not about what you're prepared to hold on to, mm -hmm. it's about what you're prepared to give away, mm -hmm. what trade-offs, what compromises are there. Okay, well, bear, bearing um, that in mind, you know, how did you react to the news that because of reduced ratings for the series so far, the, the shows from next week onwards are going to have you physically, but your voice replaced with John Culshaw doing George Bush? Well, I think it might be funnier, mm -hmm. but will it make any sense? Will it, will it make sense for my anecdotes about my life mm -hmm. to be done by John Culshaw in, in the voice of a Texan man? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal, but it's give and take, isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, you, you make a concession towards the BBC and you hope that you get back a little bit of what it was you wanted. Now some of my favourite shots in this particular episode are of um, the, the, all the, the, the faces, the face type things in the audience um, uh, sort of laughing, their sort of mouths going up and mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. opening mm -hmm. and shutting mm -hmm. and, and that sound of laughing. How was that achieved? It's all puppetry, uh -huh. it's all puppetry, um, but uh, there were um, basically local schools were approached mm -hmm. and the, uh, we tried to involve the community. Mm -hmm. uh, in in uh, Hackney, uh, and um, kids were given sponges and oranges and mm -hmm. uh, grapefruits and asked to kind of slit them to make mouths and mm -hmm. draw faces on them, mm -hmm. and then uh, they were uh, uh, to come and sit in the half light and um, dimly lit. Uh, uh, we just tried to get the lights to a low enough level where those grapefruits and sponges and oranges could pass for human faces, and the children. Um, operated them. It was all different kids, all different from all different cultural backgrounds, yeah. all yeah. having fun together, mm -hmm. pretending to be um, an exclusively white audience. Mm -hmm. The lighting level was a constant hassle because if it had been any higher, mm -hmm. they would have been revealed as just uh, a sort of um, chorus of speaking fruit. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is that the community were involved and the BBC has a lot of criticism it's distant from ordinary people. Mm -hmm. Well, it isn't. Mm -hmm. It got a load of ordinary people, and it said to them, can you hunch up in the dark, and at the point that you're whipped, can you make a bit of fruit look like it's laughing? And if that isn't working with ordinary people, then I'd like to know what is. Now, we have to be truthful about everything on television, including your mistakes and your outtakes, uh, so that everyone at home can get a sense of, of everything that was being recorded, so there's no pulling the wool over anyone's mm, eyes, mm. right? So are you happy for these two to, to go Absolutely. Out? I mean, I think often one of the funniest bits of any programme is actually the bits that don't make the cut. That's right, you know? I know. And, uh, and then you sort of wonder why they don't, put, why them didn't put them in. And, you know, um, it's stupid that they've taken like them out. That. It, it's so, almost like they don't know what they're doing. I know, yeah. Putting in stuff yeah. that's less funny, less funny than the, than the that stuff they've taken out. So they're idiots. It, if it was up to me, yeah. the whole programme would be thrown in a bin. 
okay. and burn and replace with the bits that were cut out. Okay. And I'm really glad they finally got an airing because to me they're the bits when okay. they're the best bits, not the bits that were worked on and written yeah. and carefully thought about. Just things where someone swore or said the wrong word. Okay, well let's, 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 see let's take a look. I've had another blank there, so I'm just going to look at, uh, you can, if you're near the front you can see I've got loads of cues written uh, on my hand here. I've got a lot to remember tonight. Uh, this show I've talked about uh, Russell Brand and uh, Dan Brown, celebrity hardbacks. And if you're near the front now, you can see I'm just doing hand there, hand. <laughs> where, uh, <laughs> talk about what's on my hand. That still hasn't come to me. A man has handed me a, a piece of paper here, which uh, has a lot of information on it, although uh, none of it was what I was hoping to see. <laughs> so we'll come back and do a, a pick-up of that uh, at the end of the show as a concession to the falsehood of television. Um. <laughs> well, it was going well, wasn't it? My, uh, my idea for these shows was uh, I wanted to recreate... Uh, as accurately as possible, the genuine atmosphere of doing a live gig. But now, it's with some relief that I realise that I haven't done that. <laughs> In a live gig, this would be an appalling situation. <laughs> I feel I've lost the trust of the crowd now. Oh, no, it's come back. Oh, even more trust than there was before. Peaking, ebbing away. That, that's like a heckle, but it's patronising, isn't it? <laughs> that's like someone going, go on, you, you're all right. <laughs> go on, go on, Stu. Go on, try and speak. <laughs> try and speak a coherent sentence, go on. You can do it. <laughs> go on, Stu. Go on, try and speak, try and speak this bit. Oh, all right. All right, you've badgered me into it. But what happened to Ant and Deck? They used to be great, didn't they? And now they, they preside over I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. They harm insects. They humiliate vulnerable celebrities. They teach us to fear nature. Could it be flinging insects into the berry brown face of Robert Kilroy Sink? Sink. <laughs> that could probably be dubbed in an edit. <laughs> but I'd have to go in and sit in a room saying the word silk over and over again. <laughs> be tedious beyond imagination. I'll go back now and correct it. Uh, once again, this could be removed in the edit or it could be kept in as a postmodern commentary on television. <laughs> But of course, it would uh, would <laughs> would go against the grain of the BBC's current commitment to honesty in broadcasting. <laughs> clearly, I, he clearly fabricated something that was obviously a mistake. <laughs> That's probably in breach of some sort of guideline, although they keep changing. <laughs> uh, it's a very difficult time to be making television for anyone who's interested, and it's Jonathan Ross's fault. There is an outtake in one of the shows when uh, you're meant to be talking about Kilroy Silk, but you actually say Kilroy Sink. Oh, yes, I remember and, that. And I was just yeah. wondering uh, why you said that. Well, I think that, uh, you know, there was a lot to remember, and mm. I was hot and tired and under a lot of stress, and uh, mm. Mm. I think I just got one of the letters in the word wrong. I don't think it Well, no, anything. I'm not so sure, because a neighbour of yours was, was found dead that week, and he's called Roy Sink. If you're suggesting that a, a mistake that I made on live television um, is actually a clue to an unsolved crime, then uh, I think that, you know, you, you might want to think very carefully about what it is that you're saying, because I... Well, I have thought... Uh, well, I wasn't... I, I, you know, Mr Sink and I had had some disagreements about the fence, and uh, also mm -hmm. I objected to the fact that he had, in contravention of the conservation area uh, legislation, um, put a, a huge metal advertisement for his building on the outside of my wall, mm -hmm. uh, on, on, because he was the leaseholder of the building. Mm -hmm. 
but to say that I would go so far as to surprise him in an alleyway mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and attack him and kill him and then uh, try and conceal the body um, is insane. And then also to, to go further and suggest that I would betray that mm -hmm. by messing up his name with Robert Kilroy's silk on television mm -hmm. is frankly ludicrous. Nobody's saying no anything. I know nobody's no one's saying anything. That, you know. Nobody's saying anything. Saying anything. No. And, and just finally, we noticed that uh, you've also submitted to the producer <coughs> of the series um, types of other television shows that you would like to maybe take up to the um, commissioning team at the yep. BBC. Yep. And uh, we just wondered if you could give us an insight into what some of these ideas were. Stuart Lee just wants to dance. I've noticed that as a lot of these dancing programmes have been uh, very popular, mm -hmm. and I thought, w w was there some way that I could combine me, Stuart Lee, mm -hmm. with the idea of dance? Mm -hmm. And so I thought of the title, Stuart Lee just wants to dance. Mm -hmm. Give me the lifestyle of St Augustine with Stuart Lee. I am very much um, hope, hope to make that. I know that... Uh, uh, everyone at home, um, people are always interested in the exact um, details of the, of the day to day lifestyle of um, ancient religious figures. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to see someone ill equipped to survive um, those restrictions forced to take them on, I think would be uh, enjoyable for anyone. Basically, I see it as a kind of uh, ecclesiastical version of I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Except the flinging of insects would be replaced with the the, the reading of psalms and um, and uh, the, 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 the tolling of bells. Stuart Lee's pineapple ballads. Well, we all love ballads, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we all like pineapples. And hopefully after this series, a lot of people would like me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what better way of combining all those three things than in a th programme called Stuart Lee's Pineapple Ballads? Mm -hmm. uh, Stuart Lee's involuntary euthanasia dance calculator. Yeah. Well, that's really just a, a collision of random words. But at this stage, I'd reached the point where I just thought, I'll just write down anything and see what happens. It's like uh, throwing shit against a wall. Mm. With Stuart Lee. Mm. Mm.